right, paralegal 115, Wills Trust and Estates. This is the guide for um, week number six, introduction to wills. We're actually going to spend six, seven, and eight on wills. Next week, we'll talk about drafting wills. You'll interview somebody else from the class and you'll prepare a will for them. So that'll be your drafting. You'll actually draft a will that you'll turn in before our spring break. That's the plan anyway. So I posted some slides and you can follow along, but if you've done the reading and I assume you've done the reading, if you haven't done the reading, stop and go do the reading, which includes the Illinois statute on wills and the Illinois uh, legal aid online, one page website that has a nice little summary of wills and then an ICL section that I uh, identified that you need to go find. So a will is a, a formal written document where you pick people that you want to give your property to um, after you die. And those people are called your beneficiaries. And I think most of you know that. Um, some other benefits of a will other than, and for most people, this is, these would be benefits other than assigning their property when they die. If you have minor children, which many of you do, many of us do, um, you can name a guardian to look after those children if you have uh, um, any kids or if you have any that are still minors at the time you die. You can also name your executor, the person you want to um, do the work of gathering your property, distributing your property, working with the court to see that everything is handled properly, your debts are paid and all of that. Your property gets to your loved ones. Now, one thing to point out, and we'll talk about this again later, but just to kind of clear up some misconceptions, you get to pick your guardian or you, in your will, and you can pick your executor in your will. That's not necessarily who the court will approve as those individuals. So you, you can't control things entirely. You're stating your wishes in the will. Uh, just as we talked about it when we discussed property, if you... Uh, designate some particular property item to go to a loved one and that property item is not available or around anymore at the time you pass away, well, the court can't do anything about that. So you're stating your wishes in this document. So Will's helpful to have if you have any special requests for how you want your property divided because if you die without a will, as we know from studying intestate succession, the estate's going to be divided up according to the Probate Act and, and um, intestate succession. You may have heard the term living will, so we should probably distinguish a living will from a will, and a will is what we're going to focus on now. We will deal with living wills the time we discuss property and healthcare powers attorney in a couple weeks. A living will is a document containing your preferences, such as if you want life supporting medical treatment if you become severely disabled um, or uh, you're placed on life support. A living will states what you want while you're still alive. A will is a document in which you state your instructions about what is to be done with your property after you die. A will states what you want after you've passed away. So two different things in that term living probably gives it away, but just so we cover it. So I asked you to take a look at the um, Probate Act and, and what is required of a will or someone to make a will, and hopefully you've done that and uh, you're honestly listening or watching this, but you've, you've done that and actually looked at the statute. And if you looked at the statute, you know that you have to be 18 years or older to make a will, you have to be of sound mind and memory. Sound mind means you have capacity. We've talked about capacity in different ways um, in this and other courses. So sound mind and memory. And you have to have your document in writing. Simply telling your family how you want the property divided isn't enough. It has to be a written document. It also has to be uh, 
um, signed, you have to sign it. The testator has to sign it. Remember, we called the person who died the decedent, the term for the person who makes the will is a testator. Signed um, in front of two people who are uh, getting nothing from your will. They can't have any, they can't be a beneficiary. They can't be a family member. They can't in any way, um, you know, directly or indirectly benefit from your will. So it can't be your grandkids if you're giving all your property to your kids. Um, so you sign the will in front of those two witnesses and they witness your signature. They watch you sign the will and what they are attesting to is, and signing their name to is that you sign that will they witness your signature um you know when i would have a will executed as the attorney for someone my paralegal would typically be one of the witnesses we would go through a whole thing with the witnesses um and to demonstrate that they you know they met these requirements, the testator met these requirements. Many of you will have that opportunity. Um, some of you may have already had that opportunity in internships or in work. When you're writing a will, there's some things to consider. You wanna consider who should be your executor to carry out your instructions. Um, who's gonna be the person most likely to do that in a reasonable way, in a, a you know, in a responsible way. You want somebody who's going to have to do that. I think we talked in class and I remember at least one or two people have had that experience and that you're essentially taking on the life of another person. You have to pay all the bills. You have to gather all the property. You have to make sure all the property is distributed. You pay the bills of their last illness or their burial. Um, it's a lot of work. And so you want somebody who's going to A, be willing, not be coerced and B, be responsible, hopefully in good health at the same, at the time you pass away. So, um, you know, you typically, uh, like for my purposes, I probably would want to pick one of my sons who was much younger and likely to be in, you know, good mental and physical capacity at the time I pass away, because I hope I pass away at like 103 or something or longer. I don't care. Um you get to consider who should be your beneficiaries and who's going to receive what parts of your estate. Um, there are certain debts that have to be paid at the time of your death, any owed taxes and your last illness or bills from your last illness and your uh, burial cost, funeral, burial. But um, what other debts do you have out there and you want to make sure so you can plan to make sure those are covered? Do you want to make any charitable donations? If you have minor children, it's often a good idea to create a trust. Uh, it's a trust that really has nothing in it until the time you pass away. And then all your property goes into the trust to take care of those, those minor children. So maybe a, a trust. Now, once you've created your will, you can change it. And a lot of people want to change it. And you probably should review and change your will periodically because your life changes, your expectations change, your kids grow up, all kinds of things happen. So, um, sorry. Um, even a minor change. you have to um, do the same things you did with the will. Now you can make that minor change on a separate document called a codicil. It has to be signed. You have to have two people who get nothing from your will witness your signature on this document, this codicil. But honestly, in 2021, the best way to change a will is to write an entirely new will. We have word processors. Okay, codicils were a thing when, uh, you know, it was a, a, a laborious, a, a difficult thing to type up or to create a will. We don't have that anymore. So it's not that difficult to, to recreate it and make a change of a sentence or a paragraph or pages or whatever. Make a new one. Uh, the problem with codicils are that it's that one page document. And if it gets separated from the will, there's cases 
too many things for me to have to worry about. I'm going to, if you're my client, I'm not going to do a codicil. You're going to get a brand new will. It's going to be a whole new will that takes into consideration the changes or the updates that you want in your estate planning. Now that's changing the will. You can also revoke a will. Uh, you can revoke your own will or make it invalid. Um, and you can do that at any time. So you can make a will and walk out of the lawyer's office and say, I don't really don't like anything about this. You can revoke the will. You don't have to write a new will if you revoke your will. Or if you revoke the will without creating a new one, your estate's going to be divided up according to the testate succession statute. Um, to revoke your will, you can one, destroy the document or instruct someone else to destroy the document. This includes burning, tearing, or shredding uh, the document. If you write an entirely new will, you can include a sentence explaining that your original will is now invalid. Um, if you forget to include this sentence, don't worry, They're, your original will and your newest version will be compared and any differences in the new version will be how your property is divided. Now, if you looked at the ICL uh, chapter that I asked you to look at, that's covered right in there. That chapter breaks down parts of a will and explains those parts of the will. And that's one of the very first things you'll see. Um, you can also simply write on a separate piece of paper stating that your will is revoked. Uh, this written statement must be signed by two witnesses who aren't getting anything from your will. Again, if you're going to revoke it and you don't want another will, just destroy the will. And if you're going to revoke it because you're going to have a new will, well, then get the new will, destroy the old one. Okay. This is your introduction to wills. We are going to spend next week talking about the actual drafting. And again, it's important for you to find that chapter and start looking at that chapter. And then there's going to be some other things you'll have to do in that regard. Um, and we'll talk about that, but then you'll go and I'll assign you another classmate to interview. Um, you're each going to write a will for somebody else in the class. Uh, you're going to interview them like you're a paralegal interviewing a client. You're going to find out all the information about their lives. Um, everybody's going to have kids. So if you don't have kids, I'm going to make sure you have some kids. And we'll talk about that when we get closer to the, the actual will project. But um, it's going to give you an opportunity to both get a little practice in interviewing someone in this environment or for a will, and then also to uh, draft a will for somebody else. And you'll have that document that you can use as a writing sample and say, you know, I've drafted a will. That's where we're going with week six. I appreciate your efforts the first five weeks. It's really flown by. I'm beat. I, uh, I'll see you on Thursday night.